uh, uh, think about something about uh, which is related to the youth, especially from uh, the Bible. Uh, when, you, when you read Bible, we have uh, many people, uh, many youngsters in the Bible uh, who can influence the, the youth of today. Okay, and I believe that even though you are 60 years old or 70 years old, still you are youth. Okay, the people those who are sitting here, you may be 60 or 70, no problem, you are youth. Okay, so this message is for you also. Okay, so when we when you when you read Bible, we understand there are many people, many youngsters are there. They can influence the youth of today. Okay, even to, to a church. Okay, so that's the reason I'm planning to take something from the Bible and I'll be continuing the same uh, sermon in different aspects of that sermon in, in, in different Sundays. You know, uh, uh, I would like to read uh, uh, maybe uh, three verses from Bible uh, to start with uh, the message and then we will uh, think about all the other points and we will go to the verses and I request uh, uh, three of you can read maybe from youngsters side. So I will ask you to read, uh, maybe you can read, it is there in the screen, you can read from the screen, okay? The first verse is, uh, yes, I'll read. Ecclesiastes, first slide. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9, then Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, and First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, you can read, first one. Yeah. Young people in wonderful to be young. Enjoy every minute of it. Do everything you want to do. Take it all in. But remember that you must give an account to God for everything you do. Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble and years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Don't let anyone look down on you because, they, because you are young. Let's set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, faith, and purity. Very good. Very good. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Listen, so I'm speaking to the, uh, I have only, only, only a few minutes remaining for the message, but no problem. Okay, so I think uh, uh, during the time of the Youth Sunday, we will, we will try to prolong a little bit, okay? Maybe, maybe 12, 15 or something. Is that okay? Because uh, that's good for one Sunday of the month. Okay, so here, listen. So Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 9 says, Young people, young people, it's wonderful to be young. What is that? It's wonderful to be yeah. young. Oh, the youngsters of our church, let me encourage you that it's wonderful to be yeah. young always, but it's not possible. You will get old. But at the same time, it says that enjoy every minute of it. Enjoy every minute of your youth. At the same time, do everything you want to do. This is a permission for everyone. Do everything what you want to do. Take it all in. But remember that you must give an account to God everything you do. What is the meaning of that? You can do whatever you want to do. You can enjoy your youth. At the same time, remember, there is a day that you will have to give account for everything to the Lord. Amen. This is a wonderful verse that we have to go through maybe in the, in the upcoming uh, uh, Sundays. Okay, so when we do something, Solomon is giving the permission for you to do anything. But no problem, just remember there is a day. That you will have to give the account to the Lord. I am not going to preach about these verses, but I have many things to tell you. But we will go to the next words. It says that remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach, when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. You know, there are many youths today, they are enjoying the pleasures of this world. At the same time, Solomon says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Okay, so this is the best time for you to remember the creator who created you, the youth of a church, the youngsters of a church. I mean, this is the right time to remember the creator. I mean, who created you. At the same time, before the days of trouble come and the years approach, when you will say, I find no pleasure 
in those things. Because there will be a day, he will say, Oh, I don't find any pleasure in the worldly things. And the day is coming. The year is coming. Just before that, enjoy in the Lord. Remember the Creator God. And thirdly, Paul says to Timothy, Don't let anyone to look down on you. How can you do that? Okay, so for example, I'll tell you. When, when I, okay, I, I'm looking at you. Okay, I'm looking at you and uh, I, I can take one verse. Okay, Olivia, you're sitting there in front. Okay, I'm taking Olivia, just stand up. Okay, now what is going to happen? I'm just looking at Olivia and I'm putting my head down and saying, Shay, it's very bad. I can't look her. I can't look her. So it's very bad. What she is doing, I can't look her. So I'm, 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 I'm worried about that, you know. She is doing something which is, uh, which is against uh, uh, the will of God and the, and the word of God. So I'm just putting my head down and saying, no, I don't want to look at you. Okay, this is the meaning of that. You know, it's a, it's a, thank you, thank you, Olivia. Okay, I'm not talking about you, okay? So you are good. So don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Okay, you know, normally the youngsters are having that tendency to enjoy the worldly pleasures. Okay, more than the elderly ones. Okay, normally the youngsters are having that tendency to enjoy in the worldly pleasures. At the same time, when a person is looking at you and saying, no, 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 you are doing wrong and I, I can't look into you and I, I don't want to see you, then there is a problem with you and you are not living according to the will of God. That's the reason that person is saying, I am putting my head down. I don't want to look unto you. But let me tell you one thing. If you are if you're leading a proper life and according to the word of God, then others will look unto you and will say, look to that person and I want to be like that person. You know, when uh, we were uh, celebrating the graduation of uh, uh, Jacob yesterday, you know, many, uh, when many of the people, those who were uh, congratulating there, they were saying, okay, he's a, he's a role model. Who is a role model? Jacob. Why? Why? You know, when the people are looking at him and they are looking that, okay, he is obeying his parents and he is attending in the church regularly and attending in the Bible study regularly and you know, whenever the people are doing something, whenever the youths are doing in a proper way, the other people will look unto them and say, okay, that person is a role model because we can also make him as an example. Okay, that's the reason it says that, you know, because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. So this is the right time for the youngsters to make a decision that I will be living, I will be living as an example for the believers. As an example for the believers. And in speech, in conduct, in character, in love, in faith, in purity. Okay, so I'm not going to preach about all those portions, but I have something to tell you from the Bible, and I'm going to pick some of the people, some of the youngsters from the Bible, and I just wanted to tell you about those people who can influence every youth of a church. Okay, the first person, the first person, so the topic of our message will be the influential use of Bible, the influential use of Bible, the second, uh, yeah, the influential use of Bible, amen, so I'm taking the first person from the Bible that is none other than Jesus Christ, you know, I know that when I speak about Jesus, the spirit of the Lord will move into the hearts of the youngsters of our church. I personally believe that. Now, when I speak about Jesus, the word of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the, 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 the total life history of Jesus, the activities of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus, everything can, everything can I mean, uh, speak to the people. Okay, that's the reason I'm picking the first person that is Jesus Christ. Okay, so to the youngsters, let me tell you that Jesus is the best influential youth of the Bible. Jesus is the best influential, I mean, uh, youth of the Bible. We understand that, you know, 
Uh, there, are, there, are, there are three stages of his uh, age in the Bible. There are three ages, okay, maybe stages of the age of Jesus Christ, okay, in the Bible. The first one, his birth, his birth. And secondly, you know, he was speaking to the religious leaders in the temple at the 12th year, okay. When he was 12 years old boy, he was speaking to the religious leaders in the temple, in the Jerusalem temple. Okay, you can read it from the, from the Bible. And also, again, the th third one, third stage of his uh, age is the 30 years, when he was 30 years, I mean, he was studying his public ministry, right? He was studying his public ministry in 30th year. Okay, so was, was he a young person? Okay, 30 year, 12 year, 30 year, and we do not know where he was in between 12 and 30. Nothing is, nothing is written in the Bible where he was, but I personally believe and the scholars believe that he was at his home, obedient to the parents, and he was yielded to the parents and, and walking there. Maybe, who was the, uh, Jesus' parent or Jesus' uh, father? What is his work? Carpenter. Carpenter. So, Jesus might have learned how to do the carpenter work. I personally believe that because he was there for these, these years, you know, from 12 to 30, you know, at, at the 12th year, I mean, he is in the temple, he is in the temple, okay, speaking to the religious leaders. Then after that, there is no idea about Jesus Christ. Then we see 30th year, he is coming and he is ready and he getting baptism. Then after that, he is going for the public ministry. Okay, so that's the reason I can tell you one thing that. Jesus was doing his ministry and Jesus was, I mean, was an example for every youth of a church because he was doing everything according to the will of Father. According to the will of Father, he was obeying, Je or obeying God. Okay, and you know, when, we, when you study about uh, the life of Jesus Christ, the life of history of Jesus Christ is an influential thing. You know, you know, that's the best example for today's life. And also, Jesus influenced the people by his birth. Jesus influenced the people by his birth, by his incarnation, by his childhood at home, with his parents and obedience to Father God and parents and he was subjected to his parents and his behavior was influential and his dealing to the other people was influential and his total life was influential and his work and ministry was influential. You know, when Jesus was living in this world, it says that 33 and a half years Jesus was on this earth. Okay, so we know the history about 30 years, but three and a half years it is confusion. Okay, at the same time, the scholars, by uh, counting all the histories and everything from the history, and also there is one verse uh, regarding, I mean, uh, 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 his life uh, history, that is Luke chapter 3, verse 23, and through that we understand that, uh, I mean, Jesus Christ was living in this world almost 33 and a half years, and uh, I mean, the, the, the scholars were counting the, the historical, the leaders and the high priests, those who were ruling uh, during the time of, Jesus Christ and, 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 and totally we can calculate maybe 33 and a half years Jesus was on this earth. But we have to understand when Jesus was I mean, born and the birth of Jesus Christ, the incarnation of Jesus Christ I mean, and also the, 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 the childhood of uh, I mean, Jesus Christ while he was uh, at home with his parents and he was obedient to, I mean, uh, to, uh, to his parents. You know, everything that Jesus was doing in this earth, his total life history was an influential thing for the youth of today. I mean, and also, his friendship circle selection was very much influential for the people of today. You know, his friendship circle of selection. You now, Jesus was selecting his friends from different backgrounds, from different culture, you know. You have to understand one thing. There were friends and followers from different backgrounds and different, uh, I mean, uh, uh, culture. You know, he was looking for the people not from only from one culture or one background, irrespective of the culture, irrespective of the, I mean, color, irrespective of the, I mean, race, and irrespective of uh, uh, the family background or job or position. Jesus was selecting. Every person asks his friends from different cultures and different, I mean, different areas of their life. 
you know, this was one of the best thing that we have to take. The youngsters that we encourage you one thing that I mean, when you select a friend, okay, you don't go for a, 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 a friend selecting a friend or choosing a friend uh, who can uh, that you can I mean uh, associate with that person or you have to select the friends. I mean, you have to make the friends from all cultures. Okay, so our church is a mainly an Indian church. At the same time, we have uh, a, a contact with the, all the other cultural people, right? We have the contact with all the other church, I mean, church people, and that's the reason that we are associated with Church of God today. Amen. So now we are associated with Church of God, and we will have many, many people gathering, and we will have many gatherings in different churches, and we will go there. Okay, and we will have the fellowship with those people and we will know what are the cultures of those people and what they are doing and what how they are worshipping and even July, I think July 5th or something we have uh, a meeting at Shano, uh, Pastor Shannon's house. July 4th. July 4th. Okay, so we will have that meeting and we all will go there and our, our worship team will have a chance to uh, sing two songs I think. Yeah, so we have to go there. You know, we need all the cultural people. So Jesus is the best example for that. Okay. Jesus was not only uh, looking for only one culture of people, but Jesus was I mean, taking his friend circle from every culture, irrespective of color, it's irrespective of uh, I mean the, the, the culture or background or religion or uh, I mean what, what is their job or position. So this should be the attitude of the youth today. I can tell you about Jesus Christ. And also the other thing is his acceptance. His acceptance is the second one. You know, we will read uh, John chapter 3 verse 16. John chapter 3 verse 16. Yeah. With that, uh, I, will, I will conclude my message today. Yeah. Yeah. It's a familiar verse. Yeah. Huh. What it says, whoever believes. That means God sent his only begotten son because God so loved the world, so loved the world, God was not loving only the Jewish people. God was not loving only the Gentile people. God was not loving only the Christian people. He was not loving the, the Jacobin people or Roman Catholics or something. He was not loving Pentecostal people, but God was loving the world. Amen. So this must be our attitude. Every youth, keep in your mind that we have to have that attitude of loving everyone. Love everyone, whatever it may be their situation. Okay. So that is the best thing that we can understand from the life of Jesus Christ. We understand Jesus Christ was, I mean, saying that I'm loving everyone. That means he was ready to accept everyone. He was ready to accept everyone. Especially think about the 12 disciples. 12 disciples. Okay. When we think about the first thing that we understand that he was loving everyone. That means he, he was loving God, I mean, uh, God the Father and he was, um, Jesus was loving all the people of this world. At the same time, that's, just, that's, that's the first one we can understand from the life of Jesus Christ. And the secondly, we understand when Jesus was selecting the 12 disciples. When Jesus was selecting the 12 disciples. You read Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. Yeah. 10 1. And he called to him his 12 disciples mm. and gave them authority over unclean spirits mm. to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. Okay. So when Jesus was selecting uh, the 12 disciples, Jesus was saying, okay, I cannot select uh, the 12 apostles from only one background or one culture, but he was taking the people from different, different cultures and different, different job. And those people were doing different works. Okay. So listen, the first thing, you know, yeah, I'm okay. Are they there? I'm going to buy it. See? 10 verse 1. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, when he was selecting the, uh, the 12 disciples, the first group of the people were fishermen. Now, most of them were fishermen. You know, I was thinking why Jesus was selecting the fishermen for, for the ministry. 
you know this is the friendship you know he was uh, um, he was uh, accepting all the people he was trying to accept all the people you know the fishermen they are very very silly and the people are thinking okay they are very silly and they are not uh, uh, known to the people and they are i mean working hard and they are doing that their job but jesus could have uh, avoided those people but jesus is going to those people and calling them peter come and follow me so fishermen were one of the best and uh, and and uh, 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 famous people those who were working for the lord in the, come, in, the in the next days okay that's what we read from from the bible you know the fishermen the first i mean group is fishermen and the second group is the tax collectors and sinners okay tax collectors and sinners for example you know um uh, 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 you can read, read maybe luke chapter 7 verse 34 luke chapter 7 verse 34 You know, the people were calling him a man of eating and drinking, and he is a friend of tax collectors and notorious sinners. That means the people were insulting Jesus and were saying, "Oh, this Jesus is a friend of tax collectors. Jesus is a friend of sinners, notorious people." And they were insulting Jesus. and say or oh, this man is a man of eating and drinking and he is the friend of all these uh, uh, i mean uh, non cultural people but i mean jesus was saying no i need somebody from that culture also i need somebody from fisherman culture and i need somebody from tax collectors because i can use them for the ministry of the law when, so when you are accepting all the other people there is a blessing amen that is the example that we are getting from jesus life we have to accept everyone okay we don't want only only the malayali people no we don't want the, only the, the 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 marathi people or hindi people no or oh, everyone should be there in the church so i pray that i mean let every cultural people come inside the church and they can i mean worship the lord I mean, and then this hall will not be enough Amen. Amen. let the people come let the people Amen. come the youngsters you can work for that you can bring the people you can call the people and tell me tell your friends that uh, when we have a worship service in english at the same time we have many cultural people you can also join us Amen. so this morning i encourage every every youth of our church that this is one of the best example that we are getting from jesus life not only tax collectors and sinners but not only i mean the fishermen but jesus had the friends from the royal families from the royal families for example bartholomew bartholomew was from the royal family the history says so he was having a friend and a follower from royal families and also there were some nationalists there were some nationalists in the group of the 12 apostles of jesus christ you know judas iscariot the thais simon those people were violent fanatical jewish nationalist so god can use them also and god was accepting those people to the presence of god and god jesus was calling those people follow me and they left everything and followed jesus and they became the disciples and then they became the apostles of jesus christ so this is what we understand the first thing that we have to look into the jesus christ and his history his life history and every moment of his life was influential for the youth of today and then so his birth his incarnation his life history he, when he was uh, living with uh, his i mean parents everything that jesus did on this earth every ministry that jesus was doing the miracle of jesus christ you know whatever jesus did on this earth every moment was influential for the people of those days but today let me ask you one thing when i pick jesus christ and exalting jesus christ in front of you today i mean to the to the angsters of our church let me encourage you that you can also take that attitude in your mind and be i mean fruitful for the name of the lord in the coming days if possible i'll be explaining the other points in the next youth meeting day this all close our eyes for a for a moment and let us pray together for a moment hallelujah i have been explaining